Germany is the next country to jump on the universal basic income train to help decrease income inequality and create an overall happier populace. The universal basic income or UBI for those not in the know of what this is or you know if you've not been in the know you might have you might be stuck so far up the ass of a capitalist billionaire that you can't hear anything that doesn't say profit margin. If you're in one of those categories, UBI is a lump sum given to every citizen of a nation to pay for food, water, shelter, health, and Germany's program will give $1,400 per month to about 120 people for three years. Now, much like Finland, in 2017, Germany wants to quantify people's moods and mental health from receiving a lump sum of money to take care of their needs. In Finland, people were a lot happier. It didn't lead to more people getting jobs, though, but it did, didn't lead to people quitting their jobs and choosing unemployment either. Right? This could just mean that there are less meaningful jobs to be had in Finland, not that people are lazy and want to learn how to play Wonderwall on the acoustic guitar all the time. Right? Finland's government wasn't happy with its results because they were seeing if UBI would improve employment. But UBI doesn't invent jobs, and that's, that's not the point of it either. Right? UBI's purpose is to ensure that humanity doesn't need to do meaningless, repetitive tasks and jobs all the time. Rather, we can look to improve our species with jobs that have a purpose, right? Build better communities and help the world around us without money being a limiter. It's an economic balancer, not a magic fucking job well. Here is the problem with a study like this, right? In order to truly see if a universal basic income is going to work, it has to be granted to everyone. That's the only way to determine how it will, how it will affect the job market as a whole when only a small percentage of people are given ubi it creates the same issues as social security or welfare it creates competition within poverty but most european nations are enacting ubi especially in the face of a pandemic like Spain decided to put a UBI in effect so they wouldn't be caught in the middle of a financial collapse because of any sort of global emergency again. In America, UBI has been floated around for years by obscure lefty socialist comedians, but it was brought into popularity by former presidential candidate Andrew Yang. And in the face of a pandemic, Senator Bernie Sanders and Representative Tulsi Gabbard have proposed a UBI to help average Americans. And then it was bandwagoned by various Democrats and only after they gave trillions and trillions of dollars to the banks. Democratic Senator Ed Markley recently went tweet to tweet with Republican senator and man most likely to be a serial killer, Ted Cruz, over the subject of UBI. Right? Senator Markley tweeted the general gist of what this UBI should be. This is being proposed by various different people from Bernie Sanders all the way to neoliberals like Kamala Harris. Basically, this, bill, th this idea that they want to pass is $2,000 a month for every American retroactive to March and for the duration of the pandemic and three months after that. Ted Cruz asked, why be so cheap, right? And counter proposed a million bucks a day forever and three soy lattes. Uh, wait, hold, what, hold on a second. They have to be soy lattes? What about oat milk? Huh? What about regular milk or coconut milk? Aren't, aren't the GOP all, all about choices, you know? Well, well except, except when it comes to, like, a woman's body, then... then they determine the choice of that. Old old white men within the GOP will, will determine that more than anything. But Cruz is such a capitalist that the only way to counter something that would help the American people is by saying we need to be greedy about it. Look, Teddy, come on, man. 
it's called universal basic income, not universal Bezos income, right? Besides, universal Bezos income is just called Congress, who give billionaires more tax breaks than they do Americans in poverty. And it seems like he agrees that this UBI is pretty cheap, right? It, it kind of takes away the argument of how are we going to pay for it? Well, if it's so cheap, why are we worried about how we're going to pay for it, right? If it's that cheap, then why not just do it? it? Seems like it would make a whole lot of sense. His biggest counter in the tweet is that we we have a magic money tree, he claims, and we should go ahead and use it. And you know what? He is right. For once, I do agree with Ted Cruz. We do have a magic money tree. It's called the Federal Reserve and it bailed out Wall Street before the American people. The magic money tree isn't, isn't really for dirty plebes like you and me. It's, it's for people like Ted Cruz who can actually afford three soy lattes a day. Probably with an extra shot and some syrup in there too. In the face of the largest eviction crisis in the past two decades, which increases the spread of the highly infectious disease that we're trying to fight, record unemployment due to a global pandemic, Ted Cruz wants to deny people basic needs, but did approve a $740 billion military budget. That's just a little over... $2 $2 billion a day for the American military. And Ted Cruz and the conservatives and the neoliberals are complaining about $2,000 a month for the American people. Ted Cruz not just signed a death warrant for the brown people that'll be killed by the American military, but also the American people who will now die alone in the streets. But hey, at least they get some peace in knowing that their invisible lines in the sand were safe from the invisible enemies that Ted Cruz made up. Despite its slow, incremental adaptation of universal basic income, most European countries are willing to take the steps forward to implement a plan to help their people. But when you have leadership that is either spineless or callous like we do in America, you have guaranteed yourself a failed state. The approval of a $740 billion budget, a military budget that large, when we don't need to be at war, is proof that America is more concerned with creating enemies than creating and making sure its citizens are really safe. And that has been your dispatch for this week. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I've got some pretty great live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. The Citizen Revolution live virtual stand-up comedy shows coming up. And I got a couple of announcements regarding that. Uh, The next one is August 28th. That's going to be the last show of this summer. Uh, And then going forward, I'm going to be doing three shows every single month. That's three brand new shows every single month so going forward into september uh we're gonna have a show on september 11th september 18th september 25th and then we're gonna take a week off and then we're gonna move to october uh october 6th october 16th and october 23rd and october 23rd there is a likelihood that that's going to be a pretty special show uh so stay tuned for more details about that But if you're listening to this uh, podcast in real time, I'm also doing the St. Louis Fringe Festival. Uh, So I've got a show. uh, I've got one more show left uh, August 21st at 11 p.m. Central. That's midnight in the Eastern Coast and uh, 9 p.m. in the Pacific Coast. So uh, since this is a virtual festival, you can basically... um, Come check it out from wherever you are, from across the country, from across the globe, even if you would, uh, if you would like to, if you're if you're an international listener of this podcast. Uh, tickets and details for all of this, all of my uh, uh, live dates uh, are going to be available at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Any updates from. Uh, the Citizen Revolution, any other shows that I end up doing, 
uh, anything that I will end up being a part of uh, will be directly on my website. The one thing I will note right now, uh, there are no tickets up for uh, September and beyond for the Citizen Revolution, and that is because I'm looking for a brand new ticketing website. I was using brown paper tickets, but there seems to be uh, quite a bit of technical issues to the point where people aren't able to even get their tickets right now. And if you are one of those people and you're a listener of this podcast and you're listening right now, um, please go ahead and message me and I we will figure out a alternative way for you to uh, purchase a ticket and make sure that you get the login information the day of the show. Uh, so that is part of the reason why the ticketing isn't up for that just yet, but it will be up very, very soon. But all of that information, all of those details will be available directly on my website, which is krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, like I said, you can check out all of my show dates there, but you can also uh, become a sustaining member which gets you free tickets to a lot of these shows. Uh, you can you can be, make a one-time donation. You can download my stand-up comedy album. I just released a new album over the summer called Politely Angry, which talks about a lot of sociopolitical uh, topics that we discuss on this podcast and my other show, Forkful of Noodles. So if you enjoy any of the content that I'm putting out there, you'll probably enjoy my stand-up comedy albums as well. All that stuff available on my website, uh, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, so stay tuned for a bunch of different updates uh, coming up in regards to the, the ticketing website that I will be using for, for the Citizen Revolution. Uh, and, uh, and I hope that you guys uh, will, once the tickets are up, you guys will grab a ticket and come hang out with me at these shows. We're going to have individual show tickets. We're going to have multi-show tickets as well. So you can you can buy tickets for very, you know more than one show uh, if you know that's going to be part of your, your Friday night rituals. So um, 